Hi, welcome to this tutorial. Now in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can sketch these graphs here as translations of this basic graph f of x equals e to the power x. And this would be a great advantage. You don't need to draw up a table of values. So let's get started then. How am I going to sketch these two graphs, numbers 1 and 2? y equals e to the power x plus 2 and e to the power x minus 1. Well in each of these you can see that what I've got is that I've added 2 to f of x. f of x plus 2 would be e of x plus 2. And in this graph e of x minus 1, if I was to subtract 1 from f of x I would get e of x minus 1. So when you're adding or subtracting a number from a function of x, what that means graphically is that it represents a translation. So if you've got f of x plus a, you translate the graph of f of x a units parallel to the y-axis. So if we've got plus 2, the graph would move up 2 units. And if I've got minus 1, it would slide down one unit. So I'll just show you this. If we just draw the axes, and I draw on this the graph of e to the x. Now, if I take the graph of e to the x and just do this one, which is to slide the graph two units up parallel to y-axis, if I do that we have go one, two units, then this graph is the graph of y equals e to the x plus 2. And if I take the e to the x graph and I slide it down one unit, I'll be drawing the graph of y equals e to the x minus 1. So you can see these are just translations of the basic graph f of x equals e to the x. So I'll write those in for you so that we've got this one here is y equals e to the x plus 2 and this one down here is y equals e to the x minus 1. Now you're often asked in questions like this to mark in where the graphs cross the y-axis. Now for y equals e to the x plus 2 if I slid this up two units, then obviously this point will now be at y equals 3. You can also get that by just putting x equals 0 into here because e to the power 0 is 1 and 1 add 2 is 3. So this point here is 3. And for the graph y equals e to the x minus 1, I've slid the graph down one unit so when it was at 1 here, bringing it down one unit puts it at the origin. So that's the origin there. Also you can be asked to sketch in the or mark in the asymptotes. Now an asymptote is where the graph y equals e to the x for instance approaches. It approaches the x-axis or the line y equals 0. So when I move the graph of e of x up two units this curve is now approaching y equals 2. So you can do a little dotted line like this and mark in that this asymptote is y equals 2. And likewise for this graph, y equals e to the power x minus 1, the graph slid down one unit so the asymptote here would be y equals minus 1. So mark that in as y equals minus 1. Now when we move to these graphs over here, 3 and 4, we've got y equals e to the power x minus 2 and y equals e to the power x plus 1. And what you can see is that we're replacing the x with x minus 2 and in this example x plus 1. So for number 3 we're really doing f of x minus 2 and for number 4 we're replacing the x with x plus 1, so we're doing f of x plus 1. And in examples like this, okay, when you've got f of x plus a, 
This represents a translation of, and you've got to be very careful here, minus a units parallel to the x-axis. And what that means is that the a value in this one is minus 2, so you're translating it minus minus 2, that's 2 units, in the direction of the x-axis. That's 2 units sliding this graph 2 units to the right. Whereas in this one, x plus 1, a is plus 1, and we've got to translate this minus a unit, so that becomes minus 1 unit parallel to the x-axis. And what that means is taking the graph and sliding it 1 unit to the left. So we'll just do that for you. We'll put up the axis, we'll put up the graph of y equals e to the power x, and we'll take the graph of e to the power x and slide it for the first one two units to the right. So if we take the graph and go say one unit, two units to the right, then this is the graph of y equals e to the x minus 2. And for the other graph, e to the x plus 1, I've got to slide the graph of e to the x one unit to the left. So if I move that say one unit Let's say it's like that. Now again, you're often asked to write in the values that the graphs, where the graphs cross the y-axis. We'll just mark in the graphs, by the way. This graph here was the graph of y equals e to the x plus 1. And this one was the graph of y equals e to the x minus 2. So we need to find out where the graphs cross the y-axis. So for this one, all I need to do is put when x is naught into the equation. So you've got e to the naught plus 1. Naught plus 1 is 1, so this is e to the 1. And it's best to leave it as e to the power 1, or just simply e, because it's an exact value. If you use your calculator, it'll be a horrible decimal. So this curve y equals e to the x plus 1 intersects the y-axis at the point e. And for this graph here, y equals e to the x minus 2, if we want to locate this point here, again, just set x equal to 0. So you've got e to the power 0 minus 2, so that's e to the power minus 2. And again, don't use your calculator, just mark in that that point there is e to the minus 2. I haven't got much room, so I'll just put a little arrow here and just say that that point is e to the power minus 2. OK, so hopefully you've been able to follow this tutorial and you can see that any of these types of graphs can be easily sketched without drawing up a table of values by just translating the graph of f of x equals e to the power x. Alright.